life. When I first started out, um, a skincare therapist carrying my massage bed from house to house, doing people's faces. And in fact, Joe Malone, the fragrance side of the business, was born through a little bar foil that I made in my kitchen, um, no bigger than a very small table, and some plastic jugs, some thoughts in my head. And I would give these little bar foils away as a present to people for having their face done. Say thank you very much. They paid me, I was able to pay my rent, and I was very happy. And one day, one woman turned around and said to me, can I buy a hundred bottles? And there's always a moment in anyone's business where a crossroads come. And you either run with it, or you sit back and you do nothing. And you just enjoy the moment. Your choice. I made those hundred bottles, all with little handwritten labels and covered in cellophane. They were nothing like what we see today. And they went and sat at a party for a hundred people. And within one month, 86 out of 100 people wanted to purchase the product, product and Joe Malone was born. It just grew at the most unbelievable rapid pace. And I was still in my kitchen with my lovely husband Gary, who was a surveyor at the time, um, and he came home from work one day and he said, I can't do this anymore. My dinner tastes of nutmeg and ginger. <laughs> There's... I mean, there's seashells in the bath, which they were, which I was scenting at the time. And he said, I can't live like this anymore. It was a long time ago, and we're still married, by the way. But, um, and Wharton Street, we found Little Wharton Street, 154, and we opened that. And from day one, for five years, I saw a growth in a business and a passion that I will... I live for that moment. I live for that drive and that determination and that inspiration that makes me get up every single day and think I love what I do. Wharton Street grew for five years and from day one we had a gentleman with a big fat cigar offer me one million pounds to get out and the offers grew and grew and grew within that period of time and I was just a new shopkeeper and retailer. I didn't want to go anywhere. I was really happy. And as life does, it became more and more successful. We opened in New York, we went around the world. And, you know, I'm a real pioneer. I don't mind how hard that road is, I'll dig up those rocks. I'm happiest rolling up my sleeves and getting on with it. But I love it when you see that first shop and that door open. And one day, Estee Lauder, well, Estee Lauder's son, Leonard, walked in the door. And the minute I met him, I knew my business was going to be safe with Estee Lauder, and I made the decision to sell. Always for an undisclosed sum. Everyone's tried to guess. <laughs> They've never got it right. And uh, my life was sorted. I was, well, I had it all. I was traveling first class everywhere. I had the best hotel room. I was opening stores. I had the life of Riley. But life doesn't always do that. And just as we saw on that screen, your life can change in a second and a moment, and sickness often does that to us. And mine was breast cancer. I was dressed very smartly with my diamond earrings in my pocket, ready for a big, the big serpentine party in the summer, which is just coming up. And I found a lump in my breast in New York, went to have it checked when I got back, and was told it was a little cyst, and in fact it wasn't. It was a very, very form, bad form of aggressive breast cancer. And I was told I had probably six to nine months to live. And I remember going home that night, and my life just stopped. I had success beyond measure in one hand, and I had my own mortality in the other. And I made the decision that night to face breast cancer in the same way that I do business. I was going to find the best person, I was going to go anywhere in the world that I had to go, and I was going to beat it, and I was going to fight it. And off I went to New York with the help of Evelyn, wonder, wonderful, wonderful Evelyn Lauder. Went to New York, sought treatment, was there for a year, very, very tough treatment, and thank God I beat it. I'm still there. <laughs> those moments in our life really change us, and just sitting here tonight, those families whose children are sick, it changes you, it motivates you in a very, very, very different way. And for me, after going through breast cancer, I felt my time at Joe Malone had finished. It was over. I'd given my best. 
I'd opened myself up, I'd created and designed, and suddenly I just couldn't think of fragrance anymore. Um, and it was while I was standing in Madison Avenue opening their new store that I decided it was my time to leave and go. And I made that decision and went. And that was in 2006. Never to return to fragrance, never to do cosmetics again. I'd done it, I'd turned the chapter, I'd survived cancer, I had my family, I was very wealthy and I could go and sit on a beach for the rest of my life. And the following morning I woke up <laughs> and I realised I was still in love with fragrance. And I couldn't ever stop thinking about it. Actually, I don't need these anymore. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about fragrance and my passion and my love. And that happened every single day for five years. And I tried to find other things to do, get involved with charity, tried to help build hospitals and help schools. And I made a TV show for BBC One called High Street Dreams, which was helping entrepreneurs get back on their feet and get their big break. And I loved it. And there was an Indian family called The Singh. Did anyone watch High Street Dreams yeah. at all? There was an Indian, wonderful Indian family who I adored. And each one of the family had a job in the business. One was the marketing, one was the PR. And they squabbled morning, noon, and night. And the dad always wanted to go off to India to go and watch cricket. And I had to tell him he wanted to run a business, he had to stay. <laughs> but it was while I was in their garden shed in a rather attractive hairnet and Wellington boots. I don't know why I did that filling bottles of chili sauce. And suddenly, my gut went, it's time to go back, Joe. And I knew exactly, and I don't know whether it was just filling the bottles, and it was that moment that took me back to being that young girl, but I knew it was time to go back into the industry. And I was watching our country go through dire problems. And you know what? The answer is in the palm of our hand. The answer is not in Downing Street or with politicians or with governments, it's with us. We build businesses. We create hunger. We create jobs. That's what we're good at. And it was time to go back into the industry. And so within one week, around my kitchen table, no smart offices, no computers, we set about building Joe Loves. Um, did it come back naturally? No. My, my ability to create fragrance took about six to seven months of continually working my nose and coming back into it. Um, and so many people say to me, Joe, why do you want to go back? Why do you want to do it again? You've done it. Why can't you go off and do something else? I want to come back because I feel so passionately about this industry and it brings me alive. And do you know what? I fought for a whole year for my life. And if my life is to be lived and enjoyed, and it's the one thing, as I said, that I can do, I can't, still can't swim, I still can't drive, and I still can't turn my left and my right. But you give me t 10 ingredients and I will create your fragrance from nothing. So Jo Loves was born, and here she is. She's a, we're about to open our first store on 42 Elizabeth Street, which in fact is the very first shop. I had my very first job at 16 years old. So I'm gonna return all the way back to my roots where I first started. And I was fired because I tipped a bucket of water over the manageress, <laughs> who I'm gonna to invite to the launch party. Um, so my story is about passion. And I'm often asked to go and speak at schools and, and, and just give, people often say to me, just tell me what the magic formula is. Well, there isn't a magic formula. It's hard work, it's determination. But I would say to anyone here sitting here who has a business and who has just lost that little bit of heart, find that courage within yourself to take one more step, one more step, and support one another. In that, in that mission. Because you know, it's those one more steps that you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And so often, you're about to just lay something down before you get that really big moment. And just think what you would miss if you'd lay that down. There are four things, four keys I'm gonna give you, and then we're gonna open it up to a Q&A. Am I running over? Okay. Um, four keys that, that I live my life by, I run my business by, and uh, I, we build our team and, our, and global brand. One is innovation. Be innovative in anything, whether you're running a charity, whether you have a business, be innovative in what you do. 
Do it differently. Don't always expect to do the same thing over and over and over and over again and get a different result. You won't get it. But if you think with an innovative head, you just might. Second one is inspiration. Inspiration is the fuel that feeds my soul. If I sit, just, just sitting and listening to that story, to be inspired will motivate you if you let it. Inspiration is such a, and it costs nothing. If you all were to share your story, we would all be inspired. Integrity. It's a dirty word at the moment in our society, and we need to bring it back. It's common sense, it's relationship, it's truthfulness, and it's honesty. Don't be frightened to tell people, I'm sorry I got it wrong, forgive me. Integrity, let people believe who you are and what, you, what, what you're about. And the last one is ignition. When you turn that key in your business, or in your life, or, or your job, or whatever, and you feel that moment of ignition, run with it. Don't sit there and wait for it all to be perfect. That is your moment. And for me, 42 Elizabeth Street is my ignition and my key. So you're all very welcome to come and visit us when we're open in September, October, and see fragrance in a very different way. You're never going to experience, you would never have experienced fragrance in the way that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to be there as the shopkeeper in my home. So come and have a glass of wine, cocktail, and enjoy. So I'm going to open it up to Q&A now, so you can ask me anything you want at all. questions I won't get in your way. Okay. Um, if there are a show of hands, we've got about five minutes, so any thoughts? Yes, I think that was the first one. 